Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install DIY three-point seat belts into an old Mustang or really any other kind of muscle car. Stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about three-point belts and old muscle cars. If you have a muscle car from the 60s, depending on what year it is, it probably did not come with three-point belts. It just came with a lap belt. And as you know, probably having seen the interior of these kind of cars, that's not really that safe, especially compared to today's safety standards. Um, you have metal dashes, you have steering wheels that are rock hard. Uh, a lot of cars like this Mustang, you actually have steering columns that are one solid piece that have no relief to snap if something should hit the front of your car. So. As a driver or a passenger in these kind of cars, you really want yourself to be secured with a modern style um, three-point latch system that's going to kind of wrench down on you if you hit something or if something hits you, and it's gonna keep you secure, pinned to the back of your seat instead of moving forward where all the bad stuff is, the bad stuff for your face. Um, so what we're doing here is I have a kit that I bought for the Mustang. I think it was about 180 bucks for two seats. Um, I also installed the exact same kit in my Coronet wagon. Um, but now I'm installing it in my Mustang. So um, there's a few things that I like about it, a few things that I don't, and I'm gonna go over those now. Um, but basically it's a kit to install three-point belts in the Mustang, and it comes with a whole assortment of brackets and extra parts, which I'm gonna omit from my install because I have a, just kind of a more simplified idea of what I want. Um, the original kit was supposed to mount the top part of the three-point belt to, um, to the back quarter panel on the inside so it doesn't stretch up above the window line. Um, which for aesthetic purposes is probably nice because you don't have a seatbelt hanging down This is a, a coupe that has a rear window and if you put both windows down It has a nice look to it and to have a seatbelt hanging down there is kind of annoying that said um, I Like the style where the seat belt goes actually above you to the roof of the car That's how a lot of modern cars have it and I think that's just the safer way to do it um, and it's also probably more usable from a just day in, day in, day out usability perspective. So I'm mounting mine at the roof line and on the floor and then on the floor again. And um, yeah, let's just look at some of the parts that we're gonna use and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so these are the main components of, um, of my install. I have the seat belt, which goes, connects to the standard default hole in the middle transmission tunnel. Um, use this, the actual uh, factory bolt just right through the hole, just replace the existing seat belt, so that's easy. Um, these are the nice chrome-plated uh, aircraft style buckles. Not super original to this car, but period correct, and they actually look real nice. They're really simple, just black on chrome. Can't really go wrong with that. Um, then the other piece is, is kind of the three-point system, right? So you have this, which mounts on the floorboard near the back seat, um, and this piece here, which is a bolt, it's through this um, top pivot piece that molds that that molds it mounts to the top uh, top part of the car near the roof line, which we're going to be adding a mounting point for that. You've got this part here, which is the buckle that slides along this, and then finally, you've got this um, mount right here, which mounts to your factory seat belt location. So again, you use the factory bolt here, and that's that. So. <clears throat> What we really need to do is add two mount points. We need to add a mount point on the roof. And, Jesus Christ. So what we need to do is we need to add two mount points to the car. We need a mount point on the floor to secure this spool bracket, three point thing. And then we need another mount point up on the roof line above the window. So what we're gonna do for that is we have two pretty thick washers. Um, we're gonna drill into the body of the car and make sure that we have a hole that we can get a bolt through. And then we're going to weld two washers in place, one at the top, one at the bottom, and basically also weld a nut on the inside of those washers. So we have a system like this. So the washer is welded to the car, bolt goes through the washer into the nut and secures the seatbelt in place. And we do that in two places that are new to us and then using one factory location. Now these, are all of the parts that I'm not gonna be using in my install. So as you can see, you get a lot more here than you actually need. Um, I think this kit is supposed to cover a pretty broad range of cars. This one specifically is from 65 to 73 Mustangs. 
probably also involves cougars and galaxies and things like that. So a um, lot of extra parts here. I don't need really any of this stuff. The only things I need are a few bolts to hold the seat belts in, some washers that I can weld to the car, and that's pretty much it. So um, let's get started and we'll go in the car and I'll show you um, where I'm going to, to weld. Okay, so here's the general area we're gonna be working with. Um, I already have this installed done on the other side and I've had it done on the driver's side for a while, uh, but I wanted to capture it on video and show you guys how I did that. So uh, basically how it works is you've got this solid um, sill plate area down here so we can grind this flat um, and then basically clean it up, weld our larger washer down here with the nut in the center, and then up top here where we formerly had the um, coat hook, you've got like this almost triple press um, sheet metal steel up here at the top. So it's structurally, it's really sound. Um, and actually in later models of the Mustang, they actually had a um, the three point mount up here in this area. Um, so what I'm gonna do is where the, basically it's where the coat hook mounted on this car and you've got this raised section. Um, it's pretty strong, pretty structural, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, we're gonna come in here, drill a hole through and then weld another washer up here with a nut and that'll be our top mount. Um, also forgot to mention on the bottom, we come through and we drill through so that when we have the washer and the nut and then we have the bolt, the bolt can actually travel into the body of the car so it's nice and secure and everything just fits. So I need to take some measurements on the other side, then I'm gonna come in here and clean up these areas and then we're gonna do some welding. Okay, so I don't want to say it's as easy as that, but that's pretty much um, the process, at least the way that I'm installing this. So um, I have my mount point down here, mount point up here. Not the prettiest welds, but I cleaned them up. Um, got good penetration, they're gonna hold. Um, and they'll be covered by headliner and uh, carpet and stuff anyway, so I'm not worried about appearance. Um, I'll need to come back through and just probably wire brush these and then spray paint over them so they don't rust. Um, but basically the way this works is you have your three-point belt. Um, this end mounts to your factory mount point using a factory bolt, uh, which is standard thread. I don't know exactly what the threads are with this kit, but I do know that it's standard because the um, bolts that came with the kit actually match up with the original bolt. So that mounts the factory point. Um, and then how this other part works is basically you've got this mount point up high. So that comes up here, just like that. This 
belt pivots on that. And then, finally, this guy comes down here. You have a nylon washer um, and keeps everything quiet, keeps, keeps it from rattling. Um, and let's see. That just screws in. So, so basically you are pinning this down here with this bolt and then that little plastic cap folds up over there and you adjust the height of your seatbelt latch and functional three-point belt. So I'm going to come back in here. Um, I need to spray paint that. I need to check the length of these bolts, make sure they're going to work. Um, and then I'll finish up the install. Oh, one final note, um, one thing I did do intentionally when I did the other side and I've kind of mimicked that on this side is I've made the, um, the drop point where we come down from the ceiling here kind of match the seam in the windows here. So um, there's a chrome piece of trim on the outside on this back window and there's also a chrome piece on the, um, the passenger side window here. So that forms kind of a, a chrome strip from the outside. So when the windows are rolled up, you really don't see the seatbelt at all. When they're rolled down, you're going to see it, but safety first, I guess. All right, so I actually left out a critical step when I welded these things in. I got a little bit ahead of myself. I was a little rushed in the garage. Um, so what I forgot is that I actually have to um, drill a hole through this sheet metal up here and then weld the washer on with the nut. Um, basically the bolt on this top, um, the top latch here is a little bit too long. It won't, uh, it actually just hits the sheet metal when I actually get it all the way into that nut. Um, so I need to come in here, grind off my welds, and drill that hole, and then weld it back up, and then it should be good. I did. I also forgot on the bottom one, but that's that's less of a big deal because there's actually enough space for that bolt to go all the way in and secure the bottom uh, ratchet assembly. So I'm not super worried about that one. I think that's okay. I just have to redo this top one. So grind that off, weld it back on. So I actually just went ahead and created a new piece, um, welded a new nut, you probably saw that. And what I'm going to do now is just put a bolt all the way through. Now one thing I need to note is that I'm actually welding uh, nylon locking nuts, which I probably wouldn't recommend. Um, it's pretty messy and you kind of screw up the nylon. Uh, but that said, some of the nylon, even though it's burnt, stays in there. And once you thread a bolt through, it kind of helps hold it in place. So it is, in a way, still a lot of that. Now I'm doing this so I can make sure that I get it centered, so I don't weld this off center, just because it's hard to keep up there. Eventually I'll invest in some kind of magnets or something. But I know there's expert welding tools to help you keep these kind of things in place. But for now, we'll just use the, the bolt punch through here and make sure that it goes into that hole we just drilled.
It's not going anywhere now. Much better weld this time, so kind of glad I had to redo it. All right, so next, um, I'm gonna wait for that to cool down, and then I am just hitting it with some black paint, just some spray paint. Uh, just make sure it doesn't rust. It's gonna be covered. It's not not a cosmetic thing. Um, and then I'll tighten everything up, and that's that. And start looking at the rest of the interior. Okay, so that's a wrap for this episode. Um, pretty straightforward install, but not typical, right? So it's a little bit of welding, there's some fabrication involved. Um, you could also make the argument that some of the welding I've done or the way that I have it set up isn't maybe necessarily 100% tested from the factory like these, um, like this seatbelt system was supposed to be. But, um, you know, looking at some of the welds in the car originally, not that this is any kind of indication of how you should approach safety standards, but, um, you know, looking at some of the original welds and then looking at what I've done, um, I feel pretty confident that this thing will hold up. Um, it's super solid. It took me forever to cut that top weld out of there. I got good penetration. It was really deep in the metal, um, super strong. I feel pretty good about it. Um, so that's a wrap. Um, coming up next on this car is more interior finishing. So I got the carpet, uh, which was just delivered the other day. Um, have some other interior bits that I'm working on. We're gonna get back into the dash. I need to polish up some of the old components. I don't think I need to buy new ones. Um, we're gonna keep it on budget, keep it moving, but but looking for like nice, nice finish, attention to detail. So that's what's up next. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like it, please throw me a like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, plenty more to come on this car and we're gonna be driving it this summer. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.